right, it's 11 to 11.02, and um, I call the, to order the uh, Saline County Commission public forum and meeting to order. Will the clerk call the roll? Commissioner Shedwick. Here. Commissioner Guile. Here. Commissioner Price. Here. Commissioner Larson. Here. And Commissioner Smith. Here. Thank I'd you. I'd like to uh, ask you to join me in the flag salute, the moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, We'll move next to the public forum, a time when the citizens can come forward to talk about issues that aren't on the agenda today. Is there anyone that would like to come forward at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on to regular business. Item number one, road and bridge update. Gary Nash, director, and Neil Cable, county engineer. I believe Mr. Nash will start off. Gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. All right. Uh, this will be the update for August and September. For the maintenance division, for the uh, shop guys, they took delivery of a 2015 Freightliner uh, semi-truck. They also took delivery of a 2015 F-350 crew truck, which you can see a picture of it up there. And then a 2015 F-250 survey truck for um, uh, Terry. They also perform service on and repair numerous road and bridge vehicles, heavy equipment, and mowers. And then shop and yard cleanup has begun and will continue until uh, they're complete. The rural operators, they've been out mowing uh, in the territories over the last month, doing ditch cleaning and laybacks, and then maintaining the roads throughout the county. Work completed by the guys out in the field. Uh, we got improved and upgraded Mayhan Road. I got uh, about five different pictures here. That's what it looked like beforehand. And this was to uh, beef up that road to uh, support closing of a bridge. Kind of hard to see, but there's a huge Mastiff dog right down there. <laughs> yeah. The guys were out on this project for about 30 days, two different crews, and uh, he was kind of the, uh, the local pet. He came out and saw those guys every day. They did a lot of great work on this road. It looks really, really good. That's basically our equipment there? Yes. All of our equipment. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that pe first piece of equipment there? Is that a bulldozer or is it a tractor? Oh, well, it looks like a tractor. Well, on a sheep's foot or something? Actually, yeah, mm -hmm. I think so, yes, sir. I know that backhoe was pretty old, wasn't it? That was so rented, the backhoe was oh, rented, yeah. Okay. And that's what it looks like now it's done. Yeah. They uh, seeded it and took straw out there to keep it from uh, eroding. All right, next thing is uh, we replaced a closed bridge on Link Road just uh, north of K-40 Highway. It was actually a bridge and they actually replaced it with a culvert. Looks really good and got that open back up. Then they had a crossroad culvert replacement on Sunnyside Road north of Salemsburg Road. That's what it looked like beforehand. It was a concrete culvert that had broken. So it's kind of hard to see in these pictures, not light. What it looks like now? On that, on that one on Lake Road, do we burn all that uh, stuff that's piled up there, or how, how's that taken care of? We haven't burned anything yet that I know of. No, but I say, will we burn that? Eventually. They, they have to let the stuff dry for a year or two. They usually they pile everything up, all the trees, mm -hmm. and after a year or so, after it dries out, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes during the winter months, they'll go out and burn it out. They talk okay. to emergency management. Mm -hmm. I just noticed there's a big pile out there a couple months ago when I was out there. Right. All right, they also milled some humps out on Old 81 Highway in the places where the asphalt patches between the con concrete slabs that heaved up over the summer heat. Uh, we replaced another crossroad culvert there on Waterwell Road, east of Whiteville. There it is beforehand. And after. Mm. Those guys, they do really good work out there. 
They placed a box culvert on Niles Road, north of K40 Highway with a culvert. Then they crossed another crossroad culvert replacement on Kip Road, north of Cloud Street. They placed a box culvert on Parsons Road, east of Honeck Road with a culvert. So you can see on this one, they got uh, the head wall damage here from an accident, and the head wall on this side is completely missing. Yeah. So they replaced that. So you can see it's all gone now. All right, they've also replaced two crossroad courts on Ohio Street south of the Ottawa County kind of line. Realigned ditches and repaired washouts on Rose Hill Road, west of Simpson Road. That's what these pictures are here. Then they fixed an erosion repair on State Street, west of Lightville Road. Mr. Wyatt's property. Had to take a pumper truck out there to uh, put concrete down into the washout where it washes down into the creek. And then they did another crossroad culvert replacement on Hawkins Road, south of Lapsley Road. And this just shows the condition of the tube prior, where it collapsed in. And then they repaired it. Constructed an earth embankment on Waterloo Road, east of Ohio Street, for the Stewart Everhart driveway. So that's what it looked like before. And the driveway will be in the next picture, but you'll see it down in here. How much, how much time did it take to do something like that? It took about three to four days, if I remember right. It took about 60 loads of dirt. Where did the dirt come from? Um, some dirt they had there at the, uh, mm -hmm. the right. yard. At the yard. Oh. Mm -hmm. So now he just needs to put the grass in and, and put uh, rock on it, right? Yes, sir. Is there a little tube right down there? Or yes, sir, right, right down there. there. He should be pretty happy, huh? Yeah. It looks good, too. Looks good. Mm -hmm. He did call me and said, thank you for getting that done. And right. He really appreciated that we finished that up for him. Good. Yep, it looks good. One more thing off our checklist. A lot of checklist. Yep. All right, so this is uh, out at the road and bridge yard itself. we got the two ponds out there. And uh, we started getting some sinkholes along the side of the bridge where the culverts are starting to fall apart basically and then there was a dip in the concrete you can't really see it in the picture um, but there was like two huge voids underneath there so it was all just caving in so we had to rip it up and uh, started to replace it there was four huge uh, corrugated tube pipes that were running through here so you see one of the tubes there and how it's all eroded away and rusted out <laughs> that's our communications computer lines that run from engineering to uh, Road and Bridge. But they used Lego blocks, uh, Neil uh, drew all this up. And then this is uh, them building the forms here to pour the concrete. They're still, uh, still working on it now. They're getting the rebar in it right now. And then probably, I'm guessing, two to three days before they start pouring. That's it for pictures. Uh, we've hauled aggregate for work tasks consisting of 150 tons of sand, 180 tons of Lincoln Road stone, 1,095 tons of crushed rock, and 487 tons of AB3 throughout the county. Uh, traffic control, those guys have been maintaining up to 245 signs countywide. Placed and removed numerous road closure barricades throughout the county. Checked temporary barricades and barrels twice a week. Completed approximately 90% of the yellow center line markings and then 10% of the white edge line markings on the uh, county roads. Placed temporary road signs near the railroad crossing there on Country Club. And then they uh, posted those signs at the same location while schoolers perform the temporary fix on those tracks. Uh, once that was done, that crossing is still fairly rough, so we decided to put up permanent signs that says rough railroad crossing ahead. And then we also put up advisories 
a speed of 10 mile an hour for crossing those tracks. Other stuff we've got going on, we've been working with the pumpkin patch on detour sign placement due to the Lapsley Bridge closure that we just closed uh, yesterday, or Monday, excuse me. Exploring cost-effective options proposal for a uh, new road and bridge facility. Been doing a bunch of data gathering for truck driver and heavy equipment operator salaries, compare and contrast with the uh, surrounding counties and the civilian work sector. We're gathering a list of uh, needed shop safety and environmental improvements that we need out in the uh, vehicle maintenance shop and on the yard itself. We're also in the infancy stages of working <coughs> with, uh, for a federal replacement of Crooked Bridge there on Reese Road near the uh, Air National Guard bombing range. Um, they are fairly interested in getting that replaced since uh, the other Reese Road bridge is going to be closed. The one that's a half concrete, half wood structure. Um, they're going to declare basically it's a safety issue for those guys for responding to fires on the north end of the range. On Reese Road? Yes. Or on basically Farley Road. You take Farley to get to the uh, uh, rest of the north end of the range. Um, this is the same principle that they used for when they built the road going out to Crisis City, where it's <laughs> federal funds that uh, pay for it. And we did a demonstration of electromagnet by the Air National Guard on Waterloo Road. Um, it's an eight foot wide tow behind a tractor or a truck. Uh, it's got a generator on it that powers the, uh, the magnet itself. And we took that thing out after they graded Waterloo Road and we picked up 12 pounds of iron just in two and a half miles. Mm -hmm. So, and I actually left the jar, I got the jar full of the stuff I was gonna bring here today show you guys but it's on the truck so I can go get it after I get done uh, any money in there? say again money, any money I didn't see any money jewels <laughs> there was no, no, it, it won't <laughs> you're tired it's of repair a bunch of nails and washers and you're just a little bit of, little bit of everything don't want that done. you're but tired of repair people don't want you to do that no I know they don't <laughs> <laughs> that usually sticks some of them straight up but they don't go ahead and pick up all right, over the next two months, we're going to start prepping for winter ops, getting the trucks uh, serviced and ready to go, and getting the spreaders ops checked for uh, salt. Uh, we're going to complete that yard box project, uh, begins, begin the dirt work for the Thompson Bridge so we can get that open back up, uh, start construction on that Lapsy Bridge project. Uh, I'm going to start working on a debris removal plan with emergency management. And then uh, we've been, we're going to start Dura patching countywide. We've done a little, little bit here and there, but uh, it's going to get full swing here shortly. Then we have Roger Penrod's retirement uh, December 18th. That's pretty much it for the updates. Um, there should be another sheet attached, I think, for the uh, Purple Wave items. If you guys would want to. Yeah, wanna I had it upstairs. Maybe I, I can read it off to you if you want me to, or you can look at mine. No, I don't think so. Just does anybody have any questions on the purple wave? I guess on those graders, uh, some counties have magnets right on the graders that they yeah, they've got them right that on blades. And, and and, uh, they're a little, little rough on them, and it's a little work for the grader man because he has to get off and clean it off. But they, I know a yeah. grader up north, he has one, and he has a bucket full of stuff all the time he takes off and puts yeah. on yeah, that. It, it sets fairly low to the ground yeah. and uh but this this other magnet this tow line power. magnet is much right. much stronger mm -hmm. so but it was just it was a demo to see if yeah. uh, you know maybe if we can find one sometime mm -hmm. a used one mm -hmm. it might be worth especially with all the the bridges that we've been constructing and all the box culverts it seems like there's a lot of stuff, lot of stuff left over that doesn't get picked up like it there's should. a lot of nails <coughs> those uh concrete nails that they use out there when i took pictures out there the other day well, I, and there were tons of ma nails at right. the end there on the, uh, uh, what is it, the? Uh, Thompson? No, the, the other one. The one Wyman. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's looking good. <laughs> Boy, they've got a lot of structure to come out from under there, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> I've got some pictures. <laughs> well, I do too. How, how are your, um, we've had a 
been short on drivers, employees, have you, have, have you filled all those now? Things pretty good with the drivers and the, and the um, heavy equipment operators? Are still heavy equipment, out? we're setting good right now. We're now short, as of yesterday, three truck drivers. Okay. So, uh, and we've talked about maybe doing something, reclassifying the pay. pay I mean, what, we pay need wise. to put that on our agenda and do that. We've got a problem there. We've always had a problem. It's yeah. not solving itself. It, right. it hasn't, and it's not going to. Um, I think that they have made an effort that they can start them over on the pay schedule, mm -hmm. you know. Well, we need to get the pay parent. schedule reasonable, what other truck drivers get in this but county. But you have to have equity throughout the county. So you have to start picking and choosing. So you, ne you need a raise, too, then, is what you're saying? No, I'm not talking <laughs> about me, John. I'm well, perfectly happy. I just because, one, one, because we can't hire one doesn't mean everybody doesn't but need it, that raise. It does make that. an equity that we can have some liabilities. Mm -hmm. so I think you need to talk to your yeah. human resource director, too, about that. Well, I, I know yeah. we can't hire truck drivers because we pay them so low, and we can't keep them, and we need to do something about it. So. But I think the HR, um, when I talked to Marilyn, she's said something about in 2016 they're doing another study i think you guys appro yeah. approved a study it's but, not, it's but it's not yeah. but it's not but yeah, okay and i and i didn't i didn't vote for that I'll, i want to mention that i didn't approve right. it. but anything will help at this point so that's all i got um on a personal note i just wanted to ask how you are doing in this new uh position everything Good. uh it's uh, the learning curve still yeah i'm still learning every day every day i learn something new so um it's fun to go out and watch the guys um, work. And I'm amazed at uh, their capabilities and their, um, uh, with the equipment, just what they can and can't do with that equipment. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've seen those guys with those excavators. It's like an extension of their hand. I mean, it, the way they move it around, it's just, it's just very, very graceful. It's uh, something I've never seen before. Um, so it's pretty neat. Um, job itself, no, the job's great. I love it. Um, it was. A really a s to me a smooth transition from my previous career um, so you know being a commander out there to moving into being a director is pretty much the same same uh, thing I'm just learning more and more about roads and bridges than I ever thought I would okay, good. <laughs> good. Good. but I'm enjoying it good to I guess hear. another thing I wanted to mention when we have a good rain we need to get Ryan out there and see where those leaks are at because we've paid to fix those and he'll we got a what, 15 year warning is it or yeah I think so so uh, we had one good rain on a Friday, and I was going to come out, but it was on the weekend. It was Friday night, so nobody was out there. Right. But when we have a good rain, we need to get him out there. And, and if, it, if you know, you said there's some leaks, so. That's what uh, I've been told. I haven't yeah. seen him. Well, we need, to, we need to see him and take well, a look. We've had rain out there since you've been there. Well, that Friday was a good rain. Yeah, they, they, had always been on the week. they had one Monday, too. It's always been on the weekend. So. <laughs> when, you, when you replace the culvert and you shape the road bank, sloping off there's a certain percentage slope that has to be put on that is that right uh, we we always shoot for four to one if we can get it but uh, we frequently don't have enough right away to put a four to one a four to one's a pretty manageable if you if you drive off the road you can usually recover mm -hmm. but that's a function of how much right away and how uh, how rolling the train is so frequently we're forced to go steeper than that uh, unfortunately well, I've talked to you about this before, but <coughs> where the landowner is willing to mow and maintain that, it would seem only reasonable if the county would make it so that a mower could sit on there sideways and not be so steep that you can't even mow it. That's a safety issue as well. If it's that steep, you can turn over. And I know I talked to Dave about that before, and he said, well, we can't do that, but it seems to me only reasonable that we would. Um, where you got the landowner willing to maintain the right of way, and you got that thing so steep that he can't. Uh, it's a safety issue as well as a saving to the county. And more. Yeah, and, and again, you know, three to one is about the maximum that you can mow like that. I know because I live on a steep hill. But uh, four to one is preferable for, for uh, you know, cars leaving mm -hmm. the roadway. But but again, the way the roads were opened up here in Sling County in the 1800s were have very limited right of way, and we're not really allowed to put our earth embankment on private property, so we keep it within the the road right of way, and that forces us to be 
sometimes two to one slope, which is pretty steep, yeah. Even when the property owner allows you to do it? Or uh, it that would be a legal question for <laughs> Toyo. Right. I mean, typically we're not, we don't go on private property, yeah. Well, a property owner might request it even. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, we can look into it and see. And I can give you an example of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioners, I think Gary was wanting approval too to dispose of those auction <coughs> items if you would do an action on that. The purple wave? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'd make a motion that we uh, put these items on Purple Wave, which has been very good for the county, and and that uh, I'd make that motion. Uh, second. second. Yeah. So motion and a second. All those in, is there any public comment? Bring it back to the commission. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, this is the engineering division report, and this is mostly the contractual projects, and I'll just go to the slides. If you have any questions on the written portion, on, uh, we can visit about that afterwards. Uh, the first one project is that Thompson Road Bridge re uh, replacement that you're familiar with. Uh, this was early August, pouring the final abutment on, on the north end. And then uh, you can see the rebar placed. <coughs> this was the... This happened all through August. They set the uh, formwork and the reinforcing, and on the 24th of August, they uh, poured the bridge deck. I'll go through these real quick, because there's quite a few. Uh, again, this was the 24th. You can set the, see the concrete pump set up and the crane in the background, and um, kind of a fun day to, to actually see it come together. They're beginning the concrete placement, and that's right at the end of the concrete placement. Uh, this is after the, the deck is set, and they're, start, they're putting the concrete for the uh, corral rail. Uh, that's the project superintendent right there in front, Alex, and uh, he's a good guy to work with. We've worked with him on many projects. That's finishing the rail on the, on the bridge. Um, we had some issues with a slight gap between the diaphragm and the exterior girders. Uh, it's kind of where my cursor is there. It's hard to see in that dark. But um, what we had to do is uh, we worked with the, the contractor on a solution to that and drilled through the deck and actually uh, put epoxy grout in through the deck surface. Let's no. see here. Kind of. That's mixing the the epoxy grout and that's actually putting the de the grout through the deck to repair those diaphragms with a man underneath to uh, monitor the installation of the grout and then moving on to the next bridge is our Wyman bridge this was another one that uh, through August they were preparing the formwork and the reinforcing steel I've got a few pictures of that first they they finished the pile driving on the on the south uh, bridge pier uh, right at the beginning of August, this two-month reporting period we're doing. So that's what it looked like at the 1st of August. That's looking down into the uh, pier formwork. It's kind of hard to see, but it's just a big kind of gaping hole. All the formwork is set and the reinforcing and the piling there. And that's placing the concrete into the, into the pier. And that's what the pier looks like after they've stripped the forms. And then they drive all the, they, they have the uh, concrete piers that you can see there, and also they drive the wood piling to support the false work for the superstructure. And uh, there they place the riprap around the piers that, you can, it's really hard to place that once you put the deck on it. It's, it's a lot easier with a clamshell on a crane to place it than uh, try to get it underneath after you're done. <laughs> There's all the rebar set in place and they're ready for the pour. And this happened right at, uh, again, right at the end of uh, <coughs> August. And uh, that's a really dark shot. It's, it's my artistic shot. That's like at six in the morning, they start the concrete pour and it's got all the equipment set up. And um, so it's kind of dark out there in the morning when they first start and then the uh, concrete starts coming. And um, let's see here. Just the formwork underneath. Those pictures are awful dark. <laughs> you can see the shiny vests, and then uh, they're th now they're starting to place the concrete, which is about seven o'clock. 
uh, in the morning and they pump the concrete. You can see the pump dangling down there over the bridge deck and the concrete placement underway. And that's right at the very end of the pour, finishing it out. Went really smoothly and the, the deck's in place, looks really good. Um, and uh, let's see here. So right now we're, uh, we're in the stage of the, the wrecking out all that form work. This was about, this was week, a week ago, week and a half ago. And so the form work's being uh, currently removed and we'll be doing the railing next week. And that's kind of a profile look right at the end of the placement. And then we have a few box projects that we worked on. We, this, this, is the, this is the Muir Road, 10th mile north of Hedberg Road. And these are all by Reese Construction. Uh, this is just uh, kind of walk you through a, a box being built real quick. Finishing the aprons on the, on the uh, box. Uh, placing the top slab. A lot of form work. And that's the finished box. Nice. It's a two barrel wow. box. And that's when it's all dressed up. And, and, and again, these are the four to one slopes like, like we were just talking about as far as the grading out the slopes. That's before they got it all mulched and seeded, but which we do do that too with all our projects. Uh, we've got another one that we've started a couple more boxes and just, I mean, they're fairly repetitive, but uh, from an engineer, uh, they're really kind of neat, I think. <laughs> Every one is unique, and, and so each one is kind of kind of a neat project. And then we had uh, some damaged guardrail. We had an accident on the Magnolia Road. Uh, they ran, you can see the skid marks up on the road. Somebody, mm -hmm. somebody really plowed into the guardrail. Uh, we, we, did a, we had Reese Construction do a repair of the guardrail. There's the repaired post. And um, this one, you can't, these pictures are so dark, but the skid marks you can see on the pavement, but that's the repair. If you drive by it, you can see yeah, it. Yeah, you can see he, it. He yeah. just went right he, into he it. He hit it pretty hard. But, but anyhow, th that, those costs will pass right through to the, to the um, yeah, to the insurance carrier for the, for the motorist. So, uh, the, the county has to carry the cost at least till, and then we get reimbursed by the insurance company. So he, he identified himself then, or whoever. Yeah, it. there's an accident report on it. Yeah, he left a parts of his car there. And then <coughs> we're completing, we're in the high 90% on completion of all the inspection of all the culvert pipes around the county. I just leave that kind of in as a placeholder. Uh, other projects that I don't have pictures on, and Gary mentioned, we closed uh, Lapsley Road yesterday. The earthwork contractor moved in and he's already got it cleared and, um, and King Construction will be moving in uh, probably in the next day or so and start work on the foundation for that bridge. Uh, crack sealing, the contractor will be back here at the end of October to finish up what crack sealing. We kind of waved him off. It got too hot in, in the middle of summer there to uh, complete that work. So we waved him off till fall, but he'll be back here in a couple of weeks to finish that work up. Uh, Wyman, we submitted the, or I submitted the federal fund exchange like within a day of that. That's where the big bucks are spent when you're pouring that superstructure. So we immediately, uh, we paid King Construction and submitted all the paperwork for, for reimbursement to KDOT. And we should have that reimbursement any day. And that money will then go, we've already delivered the plans downtown to Nancy Bassett for bidding the Gypsum Valley Road Bridge replacement. So as soon as we get those funds deposited, the federal fund exchange funds back in our bank account, we've got them spent again. So we, we try to keep that money committed to, to bid to bridge projects. But um, And then the other thing that uh, APAC, um, all that additional asphalt work that you guys approved, as you recall, the extension to the contract, That'll start tomorrow, actually, down South Gypsum Valley Road from K4 to the, to the McPherson County line. So that, we get APAC back starting tomorrow and they'll stay with us till they finish all that work. And even out there, uh, 
probably the biggest disruption of traffic flow is when they're going to move out there in front of Phillips Lighting and do that two miles south of Waterwell Road. So that uh, they're going to save that to the very end so that as they deliver asphalt to these other projects, they're not driving over what they freshly placed there. So they'll save that to the very end. What was the completion on that? How long was that going to take? Uh, they'll be out there. We'll have them probably for a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, weather dependent, obviously. You know, if, if it turns south on us, then it could get stretched out. There's a lot of there's a lot of truck traffic will be back on that for yes. harvest here in the next week or two. Yes, sir. Too. I mean, the beans are going now, but yeah. the mile will be going here shortly after that. Yeah. Very That's good. All I got. You, you indicated uh, on this uh, K dot bridge issue that that's closed, that's settled. Yes, yes, that uh, yeah, uh, that we uh, challenged that, and I think I think it was a good effort on our part because that's a lot of obligation for the county, probably a million and a half dollars, and we found no no paperwork in our files uh where it, the transfer of the ownership from KDOT to Sling County had ever occurred these are bridges within they're still within KDOT right away uh, which is most unusual uh but finally after more than a year uh they they supplied paperwork uh where the commissioners had signed had accepted ownership of, the, of these bridges back in the 60s yeah, 1960, 1962 yeah and, and, 69. and the right is the right of way issue if we've got to go in and fix them or repair is that an issue well, still? Uh, that's, that's a future uh, that's going to be a, a challenge it will be a challenge yeah. on one of the bridges especially the one that's most um, deteriorated the one uh, on kip road that that one's going to be difficult is, is this the time to do something about that before we get to there or not uh there's it's really uh, there's little you can do right now. There's some kind of uh, some repairs we could do, um, but it is in a deep embankment, right, right on the approach to the Kip Road Bridge over the interstate. It's right at the base of the uh, approach slab, so to make any kind of repairs is going to be difficult, extremely difficult, costly. When we were arguing this whole fact, there. Were trying to show the uh, the lawyers from KDOT who never came out, but that if we start work on this, it's going to affect traffic on I-70 because we're, we're going to have to dig into the embankment that holds up I-70. So we're like, do you guys really want us to have ownership <laughs> of this and work on this? But they didn't care. They just, here's the paperwork. You guys own it. It's yours. Yeah. So that was done in back in the 60s and we didn't even know it, huh? Right. Well, it was... It was Everything looks nice when it's new, but then everything gets old, and and then eventually it has to be replaced. And so when you accept it when it's brand new, you got to remember that someday some some future commission is get gets to uh, repair or replace it at great expense. So I mean, be cautious what you sign. <laughs> now this is not this is not on their easement though, right? It <coughs> is in it is when there it is within their right of way. Both well, why would we? Why would we be, be responsible for their right away? Because we accepted. Be like the railroad, wouldn't it? We, we accepted, accepted it. The county commission signed. Oh, the somebody paperwork said that we mm -hmm. will. We will take ownership. When of was that then? In, in the sixty two. And one, one was sixty two, and one was sixty nine. Sixty nine. Mm -hmm. It was the other one. Well, should there not be some understanding that if we've got to go in there, they give us right away to do it, or what? I mean. It, that I don't happen. think we want right the way up to the base of their overpass. But I think that would happen. Though. No. Yeah. I mean, KDOT would have to be there to watch what we're doing, too, to make sure we're not screwing up I-70 when we do it. So, Because it's going to affect closing traffic probably on one lane for sure. Yeah, so. it could very well. Mm -hmm. Is there a radock over that part right there? Yes, sir. That, that isn't ours, though, is it? No, no, not the <laughs> overpass. I mean, they they selectively give you what they close the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Good update, gentlemen. Do we have any um, further questions or public comment? Norman Manalus, Pleasant Hill Road. The commissioner just mentioned mowing the right of way. Any activity on county right of way? 
if you cause damage, you're exposing the county to liability issues. So you can't be mowing the right of way next to your property. It's a liability issue. You do anything and you'll cause an accident if somebody drives off there, then the county has a liability issue. I was thinking that in the county, the property own, owns to the middle of the road. No, but it's leased. Once, once the county has possession of that right of way to the middle of the road, they take care of the maintenance and everything. The landowner cannot do any operations on the right of way. Well, Check sure, with your there, lawyers. There's sure a lot of uh, going yeah. north of town. Most well, of they the do it and get yeah. away with it. What about the... There's a guy east of town that mows at 50 feet on the... What, what, what about the people that come in and swath the... <laughs> and take the... That saves the county a lot of money, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, And it really looks nice and it's... You've got to get a permit to do that on the well, state highways. I know that. Now, I don't know how you work it with the county. I don't know but that we have... But the landowner, and if he doesn't do it, some other person can come in and make an application to mow this right way. But that relieves the county of liability. Well, I know that north of town, where I travel a lot, people want to keep their property looking nice. Right. And they really do. They really keep it nice and... A question for in the county to a lawsuit. Yeah, and it's a legal. It's it's know, legal I question don't that I don't. I can't answer. So we'll just. Uh, mm -hmm. But thank you for the comments. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, <coughs> gentlemen? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. We'll move to item number two. Approval of county commission minutes for September 29, 2015. Is there any public comment? Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the county commission minutes of September 29, 2015 as presented. There's Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Under, under announcements, um, we will reconvene probably a, about five minutes after this meeting upstairs for session number three. Um, and I also want to um, let the public know that there is an opening on the Solid Waste Committee that uh, hasn't been filled and um, would like some interest in that. Uh, we talked a little bit about this upstairs today in our earlier session about um, what this committee does and if anybody is interested in recycling, I think um, uh, it would be something to be good, at, uh, good to attend. So let us know, fill out the form, get on the website. Um, I know a, a little bit of this is just approving grants. There's a, there's a little fee on every uh, load that comes into the landfill and then that gets returned uh, to people that apply for those funds for recycling. And so if this is of interest to you, uh, please, uh, please let us know. Uh, please fill out the form. Is there any other announcements today? Yeah, I'd like to read another quote today. <coughs> this is from Patrick Henry, if you're familiar with his name. An appeal to arms and to the God of hosts is all that has left us. Sir, we are not weak if we make a proper use of those means which the God of nature hath placed in our power. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what other course, what other course, what, I know not what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned aye. and we will meet uh, we will meet session number three in uh, five minutes.